club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello and welcome to another Art club In fact, today is episode... 10 of our club. I can't believe we've made it to 10 episodes and to celebrate I thought I would buy myself something nice, you know, splash out my little something for me. Uh, so I bought myself <laughs> a whoopee cushion. Now the only thing that is funnier than a whoopee cushion is two whoopee cushions. And the only thing that's funnier than two whoopee cushions is a whole load of whoopee cushions. So I've bought myself loads of whoopee cushions. I'm sure I'll be messing around with those later on. Uh, actually, let's let's try this one now. Come on. This should be really good. Listen. That's weird. Ah, it says here, this is a time delay whoopee cushion. I wonder what that means. I suppose we'll find out later on. Uh, I'm going to play all of your wonderful pictures from last week up here. We had loads of great pirate parrots and irate carrots, some wonderful pointillism, some really good picture frames. So thank you for sending all of those in. Uh, if you are going to be sending your pictures in from this week, make sure that you use the hashtag OlafArt. It makes it a lot easier for me to find it and send them in on Instagram and Twitter and you can on Facebook too. <laughs> If you haven't clicked subscribe, please make sure you click subscribe. I know there's quite a few of you who are watching right now and haven't clicked subscribe. To do that, it's a little button, it says subscribe, you can't miss it, uh, it's completely free and it just means that you get updates and you get reminders when there's another art club, so please do that. Oh, actually talking of all of our pictures, We've got my picture from last week here, my pirate parrot and irate carrot. One of you lucky people will have won this and the name or names of those people will be coming up around here. If that is you or your children, all you need to do is look in the description to this video and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Oh, also in the description to this video is the subscribers certificate. So if you have clicked subscribe, you can print that out and there's lots of little kind of circles with achievements in there and you can color those in once you've achieved that achievement. So in this week's show, we're gonna be looking at an artist called Kahinde Wiley. I'll be telling you all about him later on, he's really good. Uh, we're gonna be doing a brilliant two-part drawing, which I think is probably one of my most favorite ones we've done yet. We have got a bit about speech bubbles in cartoons, which is really really interesting and really useful. And we're also making a name monster, which is a lot of fun. So make sure you stick around. Uh, there's gonna be loads of fun stuff. Please make sure you share Art Club, okay? Now, I know a lot of you have already told me we have shared Art Club. Brilliant. I want you to share it with some more people. And if you haven't shared it, don't keep Art Club to yourself. Share it. Make sure you share it with your teachers. Make sure your parents share it with their friends. Uh, make sure you share it with your friends. Actually, share it with your teachers and your schools because I'm still hearing a lot of schools, they get in touch with me and they say, we are setting our art homework as make sure you watch an episode of Olaf's Art Club, which frankly is the easiest art homework you could ever have. If I was still at school, I would love that as my homework. So make sure you tell your teachers that would be really great. I think we're probably ready to get on with the show. So let's get on with it. Grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! As usual, we're starting off with the two-part drawing. Now, one of the things that I've been asked most to do in the two-part drawing is a unicorn. I am illustrating a children's book at the minute. It's not going to be out till next year. And it's got loads of monsters in. And I have done like a cross between a monster and a unicorn. So I thought we could draw that and it'll be really fun. All you'll need is a sheet of paper. I've got a sheet of A4 paper here. And you'll need something to draw with. And I'm going to use my pen again. And we'll get going. So the first thing we are gonna do is a curved line that starts around about there on your page and it just curves up like this. And this is gonna be the snout of the unicorn or the mouth. And then we're gonna draw a, another curved line like this. And this unicorn is gonna have his mouth open and we'll curve the mouth around and then we'll do the bottom part of the mouth. It will curve down like to around about there and then it will come back 
from about there. And because this is a monster unicorn, we're gonna give it some teeth. One, two, three, and then a few more on the bottom. Now we'll do a little circle there and a curved line for the snout. It's kind of almost looks like a crocodile unicorn. We'll do an eye, nice round eye here. And then inside that we'll do the pupil. And we're gonna do the mane, the hair. So we'll start here, because we're gonna leave an ear, space for an ear there. And we'll do a bit of a mane there. Let's do like a little bit like that. And then we'll do the ear. So the ear is this kind of shape. And then do a little line inside. Of course, the unicorn needs a horn. So we'll do a little horn just sticking through the mane. It goes up like so. round curved line there and we'll continue the main around the back actually let's go back to our jaw and we'll start to do a little bit of a neck to curve it around and we'll do the other side of the neck and we'll finish the body in the second part and we'll curve this bit round here this is going to be the head and we'll join that to the neck and then we'll do the back of the mane. Do it flicking up at the back like this. And we'll do that ear at the back. So I'm just sticking out a little bit here. Oh, and we'll give him an eyebrow. Because he's a happy unicorn, this one. Despite him looking a bit scary, he is a happy unicorn. I'm gonna use my other pen just to do a little bit of fine detail on the horn here, so just some little lines like this. And I might just put a few little bits of texture in the unicorn's mane. And I think that's about it for now. So join me at the end of the show and we will do the body and I will show you exactly why this unicorn is so happy and I'll show you what happens when he is happy and I think you're gonna like it. What's invisible and smells of carrots? Bunny farts! <laughs> and that joke has come from Sophia. That was quite funny, wasn't it? Right, what we're gonna do now is a quick speech bubble masterclass. I'll show you what I mean. Speech bubbles are really important in comics and cartoons and there's several different types. So I'm gonna quickly tell you all about those. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna say is if you're drawing your speech bubble, I've said this before, write your words first and then do your speech bubble around it so you know that you've got enough room. So for example, this person here, he's gonna be talking and he's gonna be saying, I really like the bouncing bum. Now we're gonna do a regular speech bubble around this, which is just an oval shape with a tail that points towards the person who's talking's mouth. Make sure it goes to their mouth and not their feet or the wrong way. So it goes like this. This is the speech bubble shape. And then around about here, we'll do a little tail that points to their mouth. Now that is regular talking. If, however, they were shouting, what we would do now, draw another person. And because they're shouting, what I'm gonna do is instead of an oval, is to draw a jagged shape that goes around. It's still gonna have a tail that will point to the mouth rather than a curved tail, it's a straight tail. And that is shouting. Now the next thing we're gonna do is whispering. Now if your character is whispering, what you need to do then is do a dotted line around. So it's an oval shape, but instead of a solid line, it's like a dotted or a dashed line. I'll show you what I mean.
Now, if your character is thinking, so not speaking, then you do a thought bubble. Now, the thought bubble is a bit like a speech bubble, except it has some little kind of balloons that come off towards their head. Rather than the mouth, it tends to be towards the head. And you can do them in two different ways. You can do an oval or you can do a cloud. I'll show you what I mean. There you go. Now the last one that I'm going to show you is really useful if you've got something that's a bit robotic, like a, a robot or a TV or perhaps a telephone conversation, or you've got like an alien or some kind of weird monster talking. And the thing that I do is a round, well, an oval speech bubble. And then instead of a straight tail, I do like a lightning strike tail. I'll show you what I mean. Exterminate that stupid bouncing bomb. And there you have it. Lots of different ways to do speech bubbles and thought bubbles. I hope you find really great ways of using them in your own cartoons. And for those of you who are new to Art Club, who haven't got a clue about the bouncing bomb, here's what we're on about. Knock, knock. Who's there? Spell. Spell who? W-H-O. <laughs> and that joke has come from Pippa, age seven. Right, now it's time for our one minute artist bit. This week, we're going to be learning about an artist called Kehinde Wiley. One minute artist, Kehinde Wiley. Kehinde Wiley is an American portrait artist born in Los Angeles in 1977. His portraits are predominantly of young black men against highly decorative patterned backgrounds. Wiley will quite often take poses from famous classical portraits and use them in his paintings. He has painted portraits of all kinds of people, including politicians, musicians, footballers, and also people he's just met on the street. In 2018, he famously painted this portrait of the former president of the USA, Barack Obama. A lot of Wiley's paintings include highly decorative floral patterns. Wiley himself says he was inspired by the British textile designer, William Morris. When Wiley was growing up, his mum owned a second-hand furniture shop and he used to love looking at all of the patterns on the chairs and other furniture around him. And that is Kehinde Wiley in a minute. There you go, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Also, ever so slightly... <laughs> Educational too. Now we are going to be creating our own Kehinde Wiley inspired pictures. Now what Kehinde Wiley would do would be create pictures of politicians, musicians, people from his neighborhood, relatives, people he looked up to, people he liked. I'm going to be doing my own picture and I'm going to be using somebody who I like. Uh, you can do whoever you want. Yours can be your favorite YouTuber, uh, you could be a pop star, it could be a footballer, it could be a relative, so like an uncle or an aunt or your mum or your dad or your granddad or a sister or a brother. Whoever you want to do your picture of, that is up to you. That's completely up to you. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing mine about a footballer who plays for my football team. He's played for my team for quite a while. His name is Peli Ruddock Mpanzu. He's really good. He's quite funny as well. And he has played in four different divisions for my football team. And he has scored in all four of them. So that's quite a good achievement. Now, I've actually got a picture. I found it off the internet of him and I've turned it into black and white. You can do the same as this or you could draw your own picture. So if it's your mum or your dad, you could draw your own picture. I'm gonna be doing a bit of a cheat here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color over this in pencil and then I'm gonna cut it out and it will kind of look a bit like Kehinde Wiley's portraits, but obviously a bit of a cheat and a bit quicker. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna color it in and then I'm gonna cut it out. Now, once you've got your person cut out, we're gonna leave it to one side 
And like I said before, it doesn't matter if you not copied mine and printed one out and colored it in. You can draw your own, you can cut one out of a magazine, do whatever you like, but set it to one side. And now we're gonna work on the pattern in the background. So Kehinde Wiley, he used lots of kind of floral patterns with flowers and leaves and vines and all sorts of squirrely and scrolly shapes. So we're gonna do that now. Now the way that I'm gonna do that, I'm using a sheet of black paper. Uh, you can use coloured paper, you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use a black sheet of paper so my pattern stands out a bit. And I'm going to use my lighter colours and hopefully they'll show up on my black paper so I've got some lighter colours here. And I'm going to start by doing some like swirly kind of vine shapes. So let's use this one and it really doesn't matter sort of how you do it. So I'm just doing some vine shapes like this and I might change colour and use actually this yellow looks a bit better. Might use my white pencil now. And just fill up your page. And once you've got your page kind of filled up with vines and lines and kind of branches and swirly shapes, then we can start cutting out and sticking on some leaves and some other shapes. So I've got some colored paper here. And what I'm gonna do is fold my sheet of paper in half. This is an old bit of paper. And I'm gonna fold it in half and then in half again, and then in half one more time, like so. I might just put this to one side for a second. And it doesn't have to be ultra neat. And what I'm going to do is draw a shape on here. So perhaps a squirrely scroll shape. Squirrely, is that a word? I don't even know if that's a word. Like that. And perhaps I'll do another one here. And what will happen when we cut these shapes out, you should get eight of them. I might do some leaves as well. Oh, I put them away. Be careful with scissors. So if I cut this leaf out, you should see that once it is cut out, I get, should be eight of them if I separate them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna carry on doing that with all of these shapes. I'm gonna put that into fast forward because it could take quite a while, but be careful with scissors. And then we're gonna stick all of those down. Now, once you've got all your colored shapes, all you need to do now is stick them onto your background any way you like. And once you think you've got enough patterns stuck down, you can now stick your person down. And if you've got any of your pattern shapes left, what you can do is stick them over the top of your person, just over the edges slightly, to make it look like the pattern is kind of interweaving with your person. I'll show you what I mean. And finally, what you can do is dot some more of your patterns around if you think it needs it, or 
colour in some of your pattern bits with felt tips. And there it is, my finished Kehinde Wiley Pelly Ruddock and Panzu picture. It'd be great to see all of yours. Please share them with me using the hashtag OlafArt. What do you call an alligator wearing a vest? An investigator. And that joke has come from Patrick, age 10. The next thing we're going to do is something that is really quick and really fun. They are called name monsters. All you need is a sheet of paper and some scissors and something to colour in with and a name. All you need to do is take your sheet of paper and fold it in half long ways like this. And then you take something to write with. I'm going to use one of these thick pencils and you just quickly write your name. So I'm going to do a big O, do an L, A and an F. Now what you do is get your scissors and you roughly cut around your letters. So I'm going to go like this. Throw that way. Now, when you open up your piece of paper, you should have a kind of a weird shape. And this is the shape that we're going to turn into a monster. And you can do it however you like. Um, I think I'm going to give mine two big eyes. That's for sure. One there. And one there. It kind of looks a bit like a frog to me. I might make mine a bit of a frog monster. I'll give him a big mouth and some teeth. These look like legs. Do a line all around the outside. He's got a little bum there. And give him some little hands as well. Some little tiny hands that are kind of bowing out to each side. And once you're happy with how your monster looks, colour him in.
And there you go. It's little baby Olaf, my shiny bottomed name monster. It would be great to see all of your name monsters. Please do send them in to me. Use the hashtag OlafArt and have loads of fun making your own. Grab a pencil, grab a brush. We're about to do Art Club. So you'll remember at the beginning of the show, we started drawing our monster unicorn. We're going to carry on with that now. So get your pictures back and get the pens that you're using. I think I was using that one and that one. And we're going to go for it. So the first thing we're going to do, he didn't have a body, so we'll get that sorted out straight away. Uh, we'll carry on from this neckline and we'll curve it around and make a little tummy like this. And then this arm that is going to come down from here. So Kerry's neck is going to turn into an arm. And I'm going to put a hand at the bottom. So one, curve, two, three. And then just extend that up a little bit. And draw a thumb there. And then draw the arm up like that. And give him a little belly button there. His other arm is going to be giving the thumbs up. So I'm gonna curve a line there and let's do the thumb. So that's the thumb. And then it's gonna be kind of three sausage shapes to make his fingers. That's giving the thumbs up. And then we'll do the other arm like that. Now I'm gonna give him two legs, quite thin legs. So one there and the other one a little bit smaller behind there. And on the bottom of his legs, I'm just gonna give him some little kind of hoof shape feet. Let's draw a little line there to make them look like hoofs. And we'll give him a flowing tail as well. Let's give him a flowing tail. And I might grab my thinner pen and just put a few more texture lines in that tail. Now this is a very happy monster unicorn and this monster unicorn's name is Spewnicorn and when he is happy he spews a rainbow. So we're going to draw him vomiting a rainbow which I think is quite fun. So he's very happy and he's spewing out a rainbow so we are going to draw a line that kind of goes like that and then another line that goes like that and then at the end of this we're going to draw some like sploshy kind of lines like this. And I'm gonna use my smaller pen to draw some little kind of droplet shapes like this. Now he's really happy, uh, but we don't know what he's happy about. And he can't tell us because obviously he's spewing a rainbow. So we're gonna draw a thought bubble and he's gonna be thinking what he's happy about. Do you remember from earlier we did the thought bubbles? So you can either draw them as like clouds or just as a circle. I'm gonna draw mine as a circle, but first of all, you've gotta write your words and then do the thought bubble around it. There you go, my monster unicorn is thinking, I'm so happy because the football is starting up again soon. Very similar to me, actually. Now all we need to do is color in our unicorn. You can color yours in any color you like, and you can have your unicorn thinking whatever you want them to think. Uh, I'm gonna get on and do that now. And there you have it, my finished 
Spunicorn looking very happy because the football is starting again. Please share yours with me. I'd love to see what all of your Spunicorns are happy about. And one of you could win my Spunicorn. All you need to do is go to the comments in this video. Make sure you click subscribe. Go to the comments in this video and type the very special code phrase. My unicorn is happy and it has spewed a rainbow. Good luck. And I would love to see all of yours and make sure you use the hashtag Olaf Art. Well, unfortunately, that is it for another episode of Art Club. Aww. But before I go, I'm going to do these quickly. So hopefully they'll be ready in time for when I say bye. Um, what else? Make sure you click subscribe. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it until you all do it. So click subscribe, download your subscribers certificate. Make sure you share all of your pictures and use the hashtag Olaf Art. Uh, send in all of your brilliant jokes. Keep watching Art Club, keep sharing Art Club, share it with your teachers, share it with your friends, share it with your friends' friends, shout it out of the window. Well, that's it. I hope you've all enjoyed Art Club. I'm going to say bye now, but first... <laughs>